How's it going everybody? Welcome back to my channel. My name's Curtis and today we're going to be reviewing the Kabuki Strength Transformer Bar 2.0. There are a lot of different safety squat bars available. Some are made better than others. It's my opinion that the Kabuki Strength one is easily the best made and the most versatile safety squat bar on the market. And that's because calling it a safety squat bar doesn't really do this bar justice. So what we have here is a $599 piece of equipment that is more than a safety squat bar. The reason that it's more than a safety squat bar is because it adjusts for different settings on each of the arms, both in difficulty and in the actual camber angle. There are a couple reasons that I was really anticipating this bar dropping and getting it in my gym and getting a review up for you guys to watch. One of those reasons is they've improved the bar but lowered the price. Typically speaking, when you see equipment companies improve something, they tend to add something, change a process, and that process tends to cost a little bit more money. What Kabuki has done is they've actually dropped the price from $639 all the way down to $599. It might not seem like that big of a deal, but in my opinion, it's a very big deal that they have managed to go down in price while improving the versatility of the bar. The old design involved like this sharp nut, it looked very similar to the shoulder rock nut, and you had to completely disassemble the sleeve, change the angle, put it back together, and it was just a little bit less user friendly. By going to this pop pin design, I'll show you just how easy it is to switch here. So right now it's in the safety squat bar mode. All I need to do to actually make it go into a front squat mode is by moving it into position. And all you gotta do is just pull the pop pin, move it, and it's in position. You can also change the difficulty according to how far out you want the load from center. Changing the load is actually really simple to do. All that you have to do is rotate this bar. It pulls out. Now this bar weighs about four and three quarter pounds. And then you can either raise it all the way up to one for the easiest difficulty. And then you can go two, three, and four. That's what makes this unique. That's what makes this not your typical safety squat bar. It also has a very nice pad, which we'll get into in just a little while. It has very nice knurled handles. The bar itself weighs 55 pounds and it's marked on the end cap with its weight over here at 25 kilograms. It is true to weight. It does weigh almost exactly 55 pounds. The, the handles themselves are very well designed and they're designed with this bend in them so that it sits in a position where you're better able to engage your lats as well as keeping them in a more natural position. It doesn't really get in the way on squats at all. It doesn't get in the way on any movements that I've done with it. I have done good morning squats and I've even done some JM presses and we'll get into that. So real quick on the JM presses, it's super easy to do. All you do is you move to the goblet mode on both sides. And then what you wanna do is set the bar up at your normal bench press height. Now you'll see here, it's not quite the exact same, but it's pretty dang close. This is with the bar unweighted. Now when the bar is weighted, like you're about to see, the uh, angle of the sleeve like pulls it a little bit more down. So in my opinion, I think it does the JM press just fine. It's probably not the most ideal. Um, I'm not a thin person, but I'm also not a super thick person. So if you're just a normal sized person like me, this should work out fine. Now, when it comes to the pad construction, the vinyl on this pad is really nice. It's very soft. I would say that it's softer than the Elite FTS pad. It's softer than the Titan Fitness and Bells of Steel pad, but it also has a lot more support. I think this is because they put a lot of detail into this portion of the bar. Now, when we look at the vinyl, the vinyl comes off and on the inside, it's almost got like this very high quality feeling. It's not leather, obviously it is like a pleather, but it feels just high quality. And I, don't, I really don't know how to describe it. It's definitely thick. It's very well made. Now the pad material itself, it looks like it's just a single type of material, but it is very, very squishable, but only to a point and it's very comfortable. There are of course a couple things about this bar that I think could be improved upon. So the pop pin design, the way it's designed is you can just literally unscrew this pop pin 
And if you do this at home, you can see that it's just a pop pin that goes in there and it gets threaded into the well. A little note, the ball end can actually come off of this. And when that happens, it allows the bar barb here to actually go through the hole farther. So just as a note, if you find that it's sticking out too far, just retract this and tighten up the, the ending point. Now, if you look on mine, you'll see that it has a little bit of light marring already from use in the garage gym. The reason that it has this marring is because when you have this bar, let me throw it back together. Let me turn it around real quick. All right, so typically when you have this bar in the rack, what you're gonna have is this pop pin, and this is how I would normally, I walk backwards out of the rack. I find that to be a better thing. We're not talking about that here though. But when you have the handles here, and you go and you unrack, the pop pin is nowhere near the J cup. Now, when you switch it to any position, uh, that gets too far away from the safety squat bar mode. So we'll go into the goblet squat mode. is you see that when it's just sitting in the rack and there's not even plate loaded on this yet, that the pins are actually rubbing right on the sides of the rack and the rack itself is wider than these pop pins. It's not by much, but what seems to be happening is this ball is wearing out against the J cup here. It's even more so for the other position. So let's go into the hinge position. So now with the hinge position, and I'm gonna throw a plate on there just so you guys can see. So now in the hinge position, when it's just racked, you can see that the pin and this bar is actually kind of cradling the J cup. Now, when you actually go to unrack the bar, it pulls it into a neutral position before you unrack, so it's not a big deal. But if you have it all the way forward and you let go of the bar, you can see that it actually catches on the J cup. Now you can push it back and forth to get it to barely miss, but it's just a little bit too close in my opinion. So right now it's exactly the same width as the J-Cups. This is a really simple thing for Kabuki to potentially improve on and it, I don't think it'd really be that expensive, but all that you would have to do is get a different version of this pop pin handle. And I was even thinking like, so Rep Fitness has their pop pin handle. So now if we look at these two handles side by side, if they were to use more of a low profile pop pin like this, and this is actually easier to grab in my opinion than the ball, this would be a little bit less of a problem. But as you can see, the ball is about a quarter to half inch taller. And in, because of that, you can see where all the marring is on the end of this ball. All right, so what I'm gonna show you right now is just the way that the sleeve, or actually this portion of the sleeve, actually goes together using the snap ring construction. So when you're gonna take this off, the first thing you should do is slide off your post, which makes this whole piece a lot lighter. It makes it so it doesn't come off as violently. Remove your snap ring. And this actually just slips right off. Now, the first time I did this, I was really careful to make sure that there was nothing on the inside of this. But what I found was that it's, uh, this might be a bushing, but it's not a bronze bushing. It's just like a steel bushing. And it's kind of like steel on steel. Now, this is one piece of feedback I think I would give Kabuki just because of the fact that, in my opinion, although this does rotate freely, uh, it seems like when you have the snap ring in place that it doesn't quite rotate as freely as it could. So if they wanted to make it a little bit better, now mind you, that would probably raise the price, but if they wanted to make it a little bit better, I would just recommend adding a bushing right there. Now you can see it does go nicely with no load. But once you slip the plate post in, it just kind of like binds just a little bit. And again, that's just because there's nothing to, so you can see right there, it kind of binds just a little bit. 
that has everything to do with like where the load is and it's slightly canted so that's that's the actual reason but that would be one piece of feedback for kabuki is if you threw a bushing right there although it might raise the cost a little bit it'd make it easier to actually change the position using the push pin and rotation so outside of the bushing being a possible suggestion just to make it smoother to adjust, and then the pop pin being a different lower profile pop pin, I really don't have any other functional type improvements that I would recommend being made to this bar. At this point, it's all cosmetic. The biggest thing just right away is this sticker right here. It does look cool. However, there's a couple little problems with it. One, if you look at where the one, two, three, and four are, on the actual sticker, it doesn't really line up with where the bar goes. So if you have this thing in number three, it actually looks like it lines up with number four. Also, it's a sticker and this is inevitably gonna wear out. Now, it doesn't really matter because if you buy this bar, you know what the different positions do. Especially if you have it for any period of time and you learn what positions you like to do certain movements at or even using the different difficulties as like an intensity progression. But what I would recommend that Kabuki does is potentially look at maybe some sort of some laser etching or some different painting options and actually just laser etch, laser cut, like make it a little bit cooler than just a sticker that says easier, harder with one through four. One other thing, and if you followed my channel for any period of time, you know I don't like this. It has an open end cap. This is by no means a bad piece of equipment. So the sleeve itself is made out of that same rib type material. Some people like that rib material, other people don't. I myself, I actually really like it. I enjoy the sound of plates being slid onto it. So again, for me, I just think this sticker, although it does look nice, it looks cool, it seems to match the bar theme, if you will. I don't know, it doesn't seem out of place. I would just rather see this be something that's either painted, marked, or cut actually into the material rather than be uh, just a sticker that's on the outside that doesn't even line up correctly with where the pin position is. I'll stop going on about that. Now having said that, this is also a sticker here that runs along the side and it indicates your hinge, your low bar back squat, your high bar back squat, your SSB front squat and goblet squat. I wouldn't change this at all though. I mean, I guess you could paint it onto there but it at least lines up correctly. It does also have the numbers, and I think these numbers actually line up with the original safety squat bar. So if, I'm sorry, the original transformer bar. So if you had the original transformer bar and you knew your positions, like you had indicated your positions, you're gonna still be able to get those back because they have them indicated on here as well. They've also got the Kabuki end cap, but again, this is not a functional end cap by any means. It doesn't need to be. This isn't a rotating sleeve. It doesn't need to be in an open end cap. Um, they didn't put the airplanes. Pilots are so annoying. So I'm pretty sure the reason that this is an open tube is because if they had put a Kabuki strength end cap here as well as putting one here, it would have been kind of redundant. Um, if you ask me, I think that the this would have looked better as just kind of like blank and have the end cap down here just like they do on the trap bar HD. But again, that's just my opinion. I don't really like closed, I'm sorry, I don't really like open end caps. I would rather have a closed end cap. I'd rather have that nice kabuki look, that nice, those finishing touches that really make a difference on a $600 barbell. So here we are back in the voiceover. I just wanted to show you guys where the weight is on each mode. So we can see in the goblet squat mode, and all these difficulties are on the number four. It's actually kind of difficult to unrack, but it forces a very upright torso position. The next mode that you're gonna see is the front squat mode. And with the front squat mode, it's not as extreme. However, it does force you to be very upright. And I think that's what makes this bar unique. If it was a gimmick type bar, you would have the same back position. But if you watch my back position as we progress into the SSB and then into the high bar, low bar squat modes, you can see that I actually have to transfer uh, in order to keep the load centered over my foot, I'm having to lean over farther to properly mimic that movement. That's why I think this bar is incredibly valuable. So here we are in the high bar back squat mode. And in the high bar back squat mode, this is the last position where the handles will kind of like push into your body. Everything from here on out, you have to pull the handles into your body. 
And if you're doing low bar back squats, you feel this in your lats big time. All right, so notice that now you're able to basically see my entire chest area versus with the goblets where it was completely covered. I'm having to bend over just like you would during a normal low bar back squat. And then last but not least, we have the hip hinge position. Now with the hip hinge position, I'm showing you guys here, like if you were to do just like a really low bar squat or even like just a good morning, uh, I use these for pretty much just good mornings, uh, pretty much anything where I'm trying to train the hip hinge, but it definitely forces and trains that hip hinge movement pattern. Of course, there are a whole bunch of different pluses. So I've touched on it, but the padding is incredibly comfortable. The distance between the padding gives you the ability to actually sit very comfortable without being too spread out or too close. The actual knurling on the handle itself is superb. I'll show a close up of that knurling now. And I do like this little plastic closure. Uh, what I'm imagining is a hollow tube. Uh, I like that they closed that up. I don't think that that would have looked good as an open end cap and that black piece adds a nice little bit of flair. I also really like the ability to manually move this and relatively easy. Now you can kind of hear it. There is a small amount of play, but again, that bushing I think would have caused that to not really be a thing. The unit also arrived in very, very good packaging. I actually remember the box being significantly larger than I expected. And when I took the bar out of the box, the clear zinc finish that they put on it is absolutely what I expected. It looks nice, but there's a lot of very plus sides to this bar. I know that a lot of people think that it's kind of a gimmicky bar and that you maybe won't use all the movements. I can tell you that in my opinion that this bar is not really a gimmick bar. So there's a couple other unique advantages that you get because of the design of the Kabuki bar. For instance, for storage or transportation, you can take these sleeves and turn them so that they're both facing in rather than facing out. So when you have it broken down into this configuration, it actually sits about 60 inches wide and maybe about two feet or so in width. What this does is it enables people that maybe train at a commercial facility to be able to take this and you can put this into a smaller car and it would store just fine. It's also very easy to carry like this. There's also a couple other advantages to this. So if you train with a safety squat bar before, you know that sometimes you'll have movements that have barbell movements and then there'll be safety squat bar movements all in the training session. If you wanted to, you could leave this, if you had two sets of J-cups, you could leave this in the rack and actually store the sleeves going inwards. That way there's not that awkward having to go around the sleeve in order to get weights for your different load or to just move around the gym. Also, if you're someone that likes to keep this stored in the rack, this is gonna be far less hazardous, albeit if you do catch this or if you have a child that catches this with their face, that probably wouldn't go too well. There's also an additional benefit here. Now, I have eight foot ceilings in my garage, which means that I typically have barbell storage issues. With old safety squat bars, when I tried to stand them vertically in a vertical bar tree holder, vertical bar, holder. I tried to stand them upright in a vertical bar holder. What I found was that the other side would typically hit the ceiling. And I'll show you guys, I have marks on the ceiling as a result of that. With this bar, I can take one sleeve and leave it going in, take the other one. And I found that in my particular situation, going into the number three hole works best. And then moving the bar into the storage spot, is that much easier because now it only comes up to this high instead of having to like kind of raise it up a little bit, tilt it a little bit, raise it up a little bit, tilt it. I can just throw it in, not have to worry about it. I would like to in Garage Gym 3.0 actually have a horizontal bar storage location for this because it would be the easiest way to store it. But for now, this works just fine. So that's been my review of the Transformer bar. Tell me what you guys think in the comments down below. Do you think that $600 is too much to spend on what is probably the most popular popular specialty barbell out there. Again, let me know. I'd love to have a conversation about it. Appreciate each and every single one of you that come and watch my videos every week. Expect more videos dropping every Monday. I'm trying to get some to start dropping every Thursday as well. Until then, just remember that when it comes to building your garage gym, that you should always make it better, awesome, and of course, way more badass. I'll see you guys next time. Are you coming in the video? <laughs> hi. You coming in? You say hi? You say daddy?
Say mama. No, me too.